Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode about Talking About Rock. I'm your host, Rob Edwards. Let's also say hello to my co-host, Jerry Schmidt in Nashville. Jerry. How's it going there, Robert? Excellent, excellent. Uh, things are going pretty well here. You know, we've got a lot of shows happening still. Uh, we've got some more interviews coming up. So I know Nashville out there is, is, is very happening, too. You've got some other acts lined up for us, which is great. Uh, can't wait to Absolutely. speak to those folks. So we are very happy to have an extraordinary guitar player to speak to. Um, he's located in Grand Island. He's a guitar player for Diver Down. Uh, let's welcome to the show, Gene Schmidt. Hey, Gene, how goes it? It's doing well. How about you guys? Pretty good. Hi, Gene. Hi. Excellent. Thank Excellent. Thank so thanks for joining us. We wanted to chat with you and stuff, you know, chat, uh, chat Van Halen and chat uh, about your about your band. So I was just reading a little bit about your history. You guys formed in 94 out, out there. And then a year later, in 95, you were voted the best tribute band in Buffalo. That must have been pretty awesome. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. That's my one and only award. I got to hang on the wall. <laughs> they were nice enough to give it to me because those guys play all the time. And they got awards up the yin -yang. Okay, this was your first outing in the first uh, band or first tribute uh, band? or first. first and first and only recognition award type of thing that being part of something. So, yeah. What, no bowling trophies? No baseball trophies? I'm working on the bowling trophies still. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't want any part participation awards. Let's put it that way. Right, right. I know that's what they give now, right? But yeah, so, it is. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about yourself, about you, you've been playing. You're a big Van Halen fan. Tell us some, some about yourself there. Well, um, the guitar gene, and I, by the way, I'm not uh, related to Jerry, but uh, he spells his name correctly. I, I'm, I'm not... <laughs> I thought you might be my long lost cousin. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the guitar playing gene is uh, my father, Gene, uh, played guitar, uh, still plays guitar. He, uh, he probably doesn't even own one, but uh, he got me into playing a real young, around six years old, guitar lesson, and I should be a thousand times better of a guitar player than I am right now had I, you know, really stuck with the lessons and everything. Um, but uh, he had given me his Hofner hollow body electric guitar, signed me up for lessons, and uh, I took lessons for a few years and always wanted the summers off because I didn't have to go to school. I don't want to go, you know, be forced to go to guitar lessons. It was, it was a pretty much a forced on thing and then stopped for a few years and then rediscovered the guitar at age 14, 13, 14. And uh, that was when like Quiet Riot, Metal Health, you know, album was released and um, all that music was really influential to me. Um, and a lot of 80s stuff like, you know, Duran Duran and crap like that. I was listening yeah. To yeah, I think Quiet Riot pretty much like rung the bell and started it all you know what i mean with, with some like of those it. tunes yeah yeah um, 1983 so you're you're pretty close to our age then well, I'm 51. Uh, yeah 51 yeah me too yeah, yeah. um so, yeah so from there did you did you kind of uh find find eddie van halen and and start getting yep. into that or how, how did that, yeah, that come I, about we're for so for me it was Beatles, Rolling Stones, whatever my father had records wise. Um, and uh, I started learning by ear terribly, but at the time I thought it was awesome. You know, his animals records and I put things on. The first guitar solo I ever learned was uh, the solo for I'm Mad Off the Animals by, you know, just popping the turntable back and forth, unknowingly learning the pentatonic uh, scale. Um, but really, if it weren't for a couple of friends in junior high, um, my friend John Lazik and my friend Bob Rush, who I still talk to to this day uh, a lot, even today, both of them, uh, got, introduced me to Van Halen and ACDC. And that's, that's where it really started, just a heavy amount, heavy doses of Van Halen and ACDC. And um, my, my friend Bob got me into yes and... Uh, rush and things like that some of the more progressive stuff um uh, that really helped kind of me to, to discover lead guitar things like that and then right. we're always like 
other kids in the school that that played too. I mean, there was this this you know, guy's a fantastic musician, his name Bill Coon, and he was in like the music band, and uh, we would talk about guitar. And he called me up and he started playing like Bark at the Moon or something over the phone for me. And I it's the first time I heard someone bend a note. And I was like floored. I always thought that that's what the whammy bar was for, you know. Right. You don't have, right. You don't have a million things to watch to figure out all this crap, you know. So it's just like really being fortunate enough to uh, to learn from a lot of great vocal guys, and they just push you. Yeah, so back either, then. I mean, back then you had to like rewind the tape a couple times back and forth, or like you said, even like do the album back and forth a million times, uh, kind of try yeah. to figure out what they were doing and. And obviously, everybody was trying to figure out what Van Halen was doing when, when yeah. that came out. You know what I mean? Okay. For me, the one of the iconic things for the first album is all the guitar, is all the horns, the car horns for sure. Running With the Devil that he did. I thought that was so cool when he hooked up all the horns and then played it backwards on, on for the beginning of the song, gave you like this, like a spacecraft lifting off right. type of right. effect. You know, Still I, good. Thought, I thought it was so memorable, you know, just to kind of... Um, introduced that album it was like i think it got everybody's attention right away oh um, yeah everybody had it in the neighborhood that's for sure exactly and then and then having uh, and then have an eruption you know people are still you know still playing that and still emulating all of that um when he hit this when he hit the scene he definitely redefined what it was to be a guitar player you know it scared the heck out of a lot of other guitar players i'm sure you know <laughs> We still have, you know, I, if it weren't for Facebook, I've met so many cool people on Facebook. All these Van Halen, like, fan, you know, groups and Charvel guitars, you know, EVH amps. There's like so many, you meet so many cool people. And I, I still have, de not, not arguments or debates. They're more like debates or questions. We'll be off to the side, still trying to figure out exactly what Eddie's doing in parts of Eruption. Right, because there's no video of him playing it the way he did on the album. He embellishes every single time he's ever played it live. Yeah, it's yeah. ever. I, I know when they first started playing live, he would play with his back to the audience so people couldn't uh, see what he was doing because he knew they were going to start stealing his licks and stealing his tricks. Right, they knew right. it was going to happen. Yeah, and, and that whole finger tapping thing, uh, I figured out how to do that from a guitar player magazine article. For uh, 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 not Eddie though, um, Alex Leipzig from Rush, right? He had this thing. I, mean, I just remember it so vividly. Flash bends where he bend the bend the note up and then go boop, just tap another one. And right. Like, what the? Oh, that's what Eddie's doing. Right. Doing the arpeggios. Yeah. yeah exactly. It's like, it was the only other way you know to figure it out is you know through a different article, completely non-Eddie. I think. Uh, Alex is another great guitar player though too. That's for sure. Absolutely. Exactly, yeah. So besides Eruption, what are some of the other Eddie Van Halen solos that you like to emulate or really appreciate? Uh, well, that's another one of these debates, you know, of like what, like, you know, I, I also, I, I have two of the, my favorite albums and, and that are the first one in 84. It doesn't mean I don't like the other ones. It's just tone. And like B-side songs, the B-side songs on 1984 are just overlooked at how just they're genius. And, and, uh, and you could hear Eddie's uh, influence from Alan Holdsworth in a lot of these things. He does some batshit stuff on these, these B-sides. Uh, um, but then, you know, it's like, I think it's, uh, I think it's Push Come to Shove on, on Fair Warning is probably one of my favorite solos. Again, it's just so bizarre. Um, and, and it's not even just lead guitar, but Eddie Van Halen, in, in, in my opinion, probably many, many others, was one of the best rhythm guitar players ever. Like of all the things, you know, a band to try to be a tribute in, the, I struggled rhythmically to pull a lot of those things off to get that groove that Eddie had that it was just so hard to emulate. Yeah, and it seemed to. It's, it it seemed to all come so natural to him. You know, when whenever you heard him or you saw us playing, I mean, we didn't really know what was going on behind the scenes in his fifty one fifty studio. And, and there's so much music still there to this day that hopefully maybe we'll we'll hear. But I I, I to, to backtrack. I totally agree with you about uh, 
the 1984 album. You know, the side two is got some amazing tunes. Um, you could see his his um, songwriting just grow and grow as the albums came out. You know what I mean? It was it was it was really Drop nice. Dead legs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but House of Pain to me, it's just it goes into this like weird jazz fusiony breakdown at the end and uh right and i'm sure a lot of that influence was probably from his from his dad with the clarinet and the, and the music yeah. back then you know well yeah so that was that was some great stuff i love i love the early stuff with van halen and it, it and when they got to the diver down album i've just been reading in the last couple of years that was kind of like what what kind of started the the divide in the band you know what I mean? I didn't realize that till till a couple of years ago when I started reading about the album, how Eddie wasn't happy with that. The thing that, that they had Diver Down album, you know, there were too much covers. Right. He just he just wasn't happy with it at all. It was a rushed album, from what I've heard. Um, the record company wanted them to put it out. They wanted to take a take a little bit of a break. So they were kind of pushed into doing it when it came out. You definitely didn't, from a fan's perspective at the time, I I I just didn't feel that at all. You know, um, there were a lot of covers, yeah, but I, I thought it was a great album at the time. Um, obviously, the other stuff has come out much more memorable, you know. And then I have to ask you this as well, Gene. So back in the day, there was the big divide, right? You're either in the uh, Dave camp or you're in the Sammy camp, right? right. So my neighbor so, just hit me up with that one, right? Yeah. So what camp? What camp were you in back in the day? So. It's, or has again, it changed or not? <laughs> being, a, being a guitar biased with the guitar period, it's really hard to not be in the Dave camp. And it's it's what Eddie did in those days. Like Sammy Hagar, I freaking love Sammy Hagar, man. You know, uh that is just play and playing those songs are a lot of fun, especially when you have a singer like singer from Diver Down, Rob Newbauer. He just kicks yeah. ass. Yeah. yeah, Jerry, what camp are you what camp are you in? Has it changed or what camp are you in in the day? Um, I enjoy both eras now, to be honest with you. I appreciate them both. Yeah, but back in the day, did you did you did you say I'm I'm a Dave man? Or, you know, or I'm fine with Sammy. What, what, when it's when the split happened, where were you? Um, I was definitely a Dave man. I was um, disappointed about the change, but um, I bought the fifty one fifty album, and I I love it from top to bottom. Always have. Yeah, yeah, I was really, I was really in the the Dave camp big time because I was a huge David Lee Roth fan, watching all the lead singers and stuff, and I just thought he was it. And I didn't, I I bought fifty one fifty, and I loved it. I I thought it was great, but then oh you when I think their first one oh you eight one two, I was just like no, I'm 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 done yeah. with you guys for a while. Yeah, Sorry. yeah, they started to get soft, you know. Yeah. And, and and Dave released his solo stuff, and when he came out with Eat Him and Smile and stuff, and I just thought that was amazing. And Skyscraper, I thought that was amazing. You know, he had Steve Vai and Billy Sheehan, and how could you how could you compete with that? Really, you know, I thought it was it amazing. Might have, the, uh, might have been the best band of the '80s. Yeah, yeah. And then obviously, as years go have gone on, you know, definitely respect to to Sammy and the band, the songwriting. Definitely changed. It was more uh, hit radio oriented songwriting. They they sold a heck of a lot of albums with Sammy, you know. And I I appreciate Sammy as a guitar player, as a singer. And so I kind of kind of like now there's like it's a divide. It's like okay, there's there's the Dave era and there's the Sammy era, you know. And they both kind of have I, their I'm place. I'm enjoying both. I'll play them both. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's there's gems on the on like balance and front lawful carnal knowledge. You know, like Judgment Day. Yeah, oh, some heavy stuff. You know, the guitar is just it's crazy. I I'm, I'm um, I can't think of a couple other ones that were real the really just powerful songs, but yeah, I love I love Pound Cake. I think that's it was a great song. I love when he would he got the drill out and was doing that. I'm like, what is this? He's just doing something else different, you know. It was so cool. Yeah. Um the, the things he would come up with, you know, and the different experimenting he would do, and I'm sure things that we don't even know that he did yet, you know what I mean? That maybe will come out one day. But uh, yeah, love that. Uh round and round, obviously, you know, was amazing right now. All that's all that stuff was 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 amazing. And then there was kind of a, a rebirth, like he had a lot of health issues going on, unfortunately. And then there was like a rebirth when he brought um, brought his son into the band. Uh, but I think there was there was there was a two sided thing to that. You know, he, he dropped Mike Anthony, and I think people were upset about that. 
but I think it also invigorated and brought new blood into the band, bringing his son in. I thought that was very, very cool. You know? Yeah, totally. It's one of those things. It's like, it's that situation with, with Wolfgang and uh, Michael Anthony. It's hard to complain because it's his kid. Right. And he's right. So yeah. Talented. That, and he is so talented. If there's any reason to break up the original core four guys, that's that you can slide on that one, you know. Yeah. Well, he had his brother in the band too, so right. I guess he wanted to keep it in the family. Yeah. Right. I mean, and Mike, Mike moved on with Sammy, and he did stuff with Sammy, he did uh, Circle and Chicken Foot and things like that, and, yeah. and they they made some good music. You know, it wasn't as far as I think it wasn't to the standard that they had set for themselves. You know what I mean? And that I think has to do with the songwriting of Eddie and the guitar playing of Eddie. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. But um, they're a band that's going to obviously, you know, be immortalized and the guitar playing of Eddie Van Halen will be, you know, talked about for umpteen years, obviously. You know, whenever you whenever you talk about the great guitar players, Jimi Hendrix, Jimmy Page, you know, Eric Clapton, you oh, there's Eddie Van Halen is, is always there. You know, Randy Rhodes, too. Do you so, guys yeah. think that there's going to be another guitar wizard coming down the pike here? Or do you feel like there's one currently right now that um, that matches up to some of those guys that you just mentioned? A, a true um, virtuoso of the there, instrument? The, the, you can go down a rabbit hole in about an hour on YouTube and go, oh, <laughs> I had no idea. I mean, the, 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 there's, uh, I don't even know the, the kid's full name, it's Mateo something or something. This dude just plays with his fingertips. A young kid on a Gibson SG and just rips a thousand miles, but it's tasteful stuff. You know, it's not always speed. Um, you know, I, I, I love you know, the school of, uh, um, you know, uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan and stuff like that. I still, you know, love that. If you, uh, Joe Bonamassa to me is, is one of those guys. He's coming here to the Ryman Auditorium. I need to go check him out. Seen him twice. And it gives, he'll give you the chills. It's funny. I, I met up with a bunch of friends and we were sitting in the theater way far apart. And there was one point where he was doing something and the whole place was just hang on. And, and I got on my phone and texted my buddy that he sold his soul to the devil. <laughs> so I was like, you just can't play like this guy. Right. And, and he was like, I was just going to text you the same thing. Like it's like it's like the whole place was just in tune with like how it, deep this this guy is, how he played. And at the same rate, he's like so funny and nerdy. And he's the first guy to go, I stole this from Eric Clapton, I stole this from Jeff Beck, I stole this from Eric Johnson, uh, these licks, and he'll show you because he was just this little kid in bloodline. Have you ever heard any stuff of bloodline from Joe Bonamassa? Yeah. It's, yeah. It, yeah, it's mind blowing. But so you know, but it's hard to put him in the category of someone that you can, you know, you, you can kind of tell it's him when he's playing, you know, he's not like an Eddie, a George Lynch or um, people like Steve Vai or Warney Martini. These are the guys that I really like. That it's like, you can just tell it's them as soon as they yeah. play. Eric Johnson. Um, but there are guys, you know, like I'm a Vinnie Moore fan. Uh, if you listen to Vinnie Moore, are you familiar at all? But it's just, it, it's all that neoclassical, guitar stuff that my wife hates and, and half of my friends right? it's yeah. like i think a lot of women do hate that yeah along with rush my wife started to like rush she don't like genesis like i have a band with my brother-in-law called skyway and we we do genesis and deep purple and boston and we haven't played in four years so that's the other project i do besides like diver down and i'd love to do more of it but my wife calls those songs by those bands of progressive stuff. Oh, time to go to the bathroom songs, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah I think it's hard to sell the women on the progressive music. That's for yeah, sure. That's very true. That's very true. Yeah. But definitely, I think going back to your question about the, the guitar players, I think we're all hoping that that the younger generation starts to key in more on a lot of this type of music and it doesn't start to die out, you know, with 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 our generation you know what i mean i do we do see 
newer bands coming out, younger bands coming out with that rock sound. I mean, especially out there where Jerry is in Nashville, they got a lot of acts coming out there, uh, which, which their, their sound is great. You know, uh, Naked Gypsy Queens, we spoke to them and they can they kind of have like a Led Zeppelin type of bluesy style to a lot of their stuff, which is really cool. Right. And, yeah. The um, kid plays a pretty mean slide guitar. Yeah. Oh, oh it's, it's just, yeah, it's just, oh. yeah. It's really eerie. It's like he's channeling some Jimmy Page going on there. He's 21 years old. So, and, and there's there's other acts coming on. I just hope that you know that uh, that starts to grow again, and 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 younger folks you know get into that. And I hope they they start to get into playing playing guitar like they used to be. And that used to be such a huge thing for so many people. You know, the guitar player magazines and everything, and. You know, the guitar player got to be front and center for for, for the songwriting, and and now it's it's just kind of computer techno. It can be back and forth. It can be anything. You know, I think but, there's some hope. I met yeah, uh, exactly. I met an 18 year old kid over the summer. Uh, his name's Brandon, and I'm going to butcher his last name. It's Jarson Zinski. The kid can rip like Eddie. He's got parents that support him like you wouldn't believe. Um, and uh, the problem with it, you know, at his age is finding other kids his age that he can grow with and play with, you know, without playing with guys that are older than his parents, you know. Right. And, right. The show yeah. Just, uh, yeah. 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 When we, on our last show the other day, when we spoke to uh, Stephen from uh, Land of Oz, you know, he was talking about finding the 15 year old guitar player who actually reached out to him through a friend to find people. So yeah, I think you're totally on, on, on the track there with that. That's going to be hard for them to find other folks to, uh, to, to fill out their band and move forward, but let's hope, let's hope they keep pressing on and keep this style of music going. You know, yeah, they're absolutely. definitely, they're definitely what's going to, what's going to happen next. Uh, if, if, if we don't, if you don't keep doing that. Yeah. Didn't have, uh, didn't Steven from um, the land of Oz have a young kid in his band. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Yeah, Steven, yeah, yeah had the 15-year-old guitar player. A friend wow. of his reached out and said, hey, there's this 15-year-old kid. He's smoking. He's playing, you know, all the solos from, from uh, Diary and Blizzard. Go check him out. And Steven was like, uh, okay, well, you're my friend. I'll go check him out. You know, and he was just blown away. You know, the kid was smoking, and he got like a twofer. His dad's an awesome rhythm guitar player as well. So he's, they're both in the band, you know, and so oh, I'll oh, be checking them out. Yeah, I'll be checking them out coming this Friday. Come, they're coming to Riviera Theater and stuff. But so, yeah. Um, okay. yeah, I mean, it's let's let's hope that 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 just keeps going and we keep that thing alive. That's kind of kind of what we want to do on the show is make everybody realize, you know, there's still this music around. There's still local bands around. You know, if, if you want to support support this type of music, you need to go out and see these folks. You know, um, there's nobody's putting out albums that much anymore, really. I mean, here and there, but it's it's all goes to streaming. Everything streams. So. Uh, you want to experience this music you need to go see a live show and we still have some good live shows uh coming to our area which is cool jerry's got some great stuff coming coming up uh, out there jerry what are you going you're going to see some stuff coming up this weekend right yeah we got uh mr gray and love's tragedy playing friday night over at bowie's um we have um symptom of the universe the sabbath cover band on saturday night along with a Thin Lizzy cover band. Um, and I forget what they call themselves now. And they're both fronted by uh, female singers, female rockers. So excellent, excellent. Yeah, we've seen the interesting. Yeah, we've seen the cover band thing is huge, you know, and we've kind of realized that it's the effect of, uh, you know, st the streaming and the concert tickets, you know, you can't afford to be paying $130 every couple months to go see a band or $200, you know. If you want to see you know these these professional bands but you, you can go see cover bands you know and i think that's why it's exploded all over the place you know what i mean all over the place there's cover bands um there's not that much original going on here in buffalo there's still a little bit but not as much you know in nashville there's a, there's a lot more of a scene going on there definitely a lot more oh all over the place yeah and, it's hard uh, to pick and choose sometimes that's awesome and we want, I want to talk to you a little bit, uh, Gene, about another project you were involved with. So we, we spoke with John Jeffries from Kiss This a while back, and he put together a project, uh, Buffalo Rock City. You know, can you tell us your, about your involvement in that a little bit and what's coming up uh, this weekend? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, first of all, that's probably one of the best things that ever happened. And that was 
by happenstance that uh, uh, John had put uh, him and a couple other guys, Jody Valletta from Dew Driver, which is one of our awesome local original bands, um, our big Kiss bands, and and it went from talking about hey, you know, Kiss they should play some of these real obscure songs. It'd be awesome to hear, you know, but, you know, you know, they started rattling off songs they'd love to hear live. And they said, you know, why don't we play those together and just, why don't we record it? No, oh, then it turned out, why don't we record it? I'm, I'm paraphrasing John, right? So you're hearing a watered down version of some, you know, some real epiphany type of moments that they had. Um, and so they'd already put together like a list of songs to play. And then it turned into local musicians. And then John has a lot of connections and he's, he reached out to um, you know, the, the Talisman, which they're the touring band for Ace Brearley and Gene Simmons, right? They're Nashville guys. Yep, and I know those guys too, yeah. He got all them to play on the record. He got, uh, um, let's see, uh, Tommy Henriksen. He played, uh, I'm gonna probably misquote some of these but um, in uh, Else Cooper, Toto, you got Dean Castronovo was the drummer from Journey. You know, there's a huge Bumblefoot. Robbie you know, Takek from the Goonies. Robbie Goody, Takek, though. of course, yeah. So he, you know, he was able to rally all these cool guys together um, to play. And he had a few songs that he had allocated, two songs. He had allocated for another local guitar player who backed out kind of the 11th hour. And I, one of my big hobbies has been doing YouTube videos of, of guitar covers where I get a really good backing track, the best I can find, with no guitar, and I'll put up the camera and lay down the track, the guitar tracks, in front of the camera, and and uh, then uh, get as much footage as I can, mute the sound on my footage, mix the song real nice, and then line everything up. So you, you, I've seen other people do it. And I, it took me a while to figure it out. My old boss at my old job told me how they did it. And I had a light bulb went up. I'm like, that sounds like a fun thing to do. So I would do all these YouTube videos and I was tone chasing, trying to match like all the tones for, um, uh, for, uh, what's it, uh, for, well, for Van Halen, Rat, Dokken, um, autograph like i was doing all these covers where i was trying to do the tone matching and i i posted a video that i'd done with an, another great local singer of back on the streets like my version of it uh, which is and and john had messaged me and said hey you know i need a guitar player and i've known john for 20 something years but you know more just like we knew who each other was i've you know talked to him a few times played guitar with him a couple times noodling around over the years and he said i saw your videos would you be interested in doing laying on the tracks on a couple of uh kiss songs for a, a kiss tribute almost oh yeah it sounds like you know total fun um and then it turned into playing on three songs on that record and then it turned into uh recording half the tracks right here in in my basement because of covid he had studio time where the they they couldn't get back in the studio because of covid so I was like, uh, just wear a mask, you know, the people, unless they're singing, they come over and lay down tracks. So yeah, I got involved in that. And, you know, anything John had visioned, envisioned about this project, he made come true. Um, a lot of effort and coordination on his part and a lot of people, like 30 people total, made this record happen. Um, and uh, we have the opportunity on Saturday at our Music is Art Festival, um, this kind of Robbie Takak's baby, and he just so happens to be singing on a song on the record. Uh, we're going to perform, a representative of uh, seven people are going to perform six songs off the record. Uh, and uh, I'm pretty excited. So I, I never play acoustic guitar. Let's see. So, but uh, I'm going to be playing... Uh, a hard luck woman on stage with Robbie. Oh, beautiful guys! So yeah, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah, both both Jerry and I really really liked the album. You know, really liked the tracks on it. Thought it was a very cool idea. You know, great benefit album. You know, you know for the uh, for the homeless youth. I think from Buffalo. That's what John set it up for. Yeah, and I thought it was such a, a cool idea. The concept and stuff was was really neat. And Picking then um, more obscure tracks was uh, was a brilliant idea. 
Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, telling me about, you know, that you guys should be doing this at the upcoming Music is Art Festival that, you know, Robbie Takehack does. I was like, that well, that's so cool. Talk about rock definitely needs to be there, checking that out, you know. So um, that was definitely, uh, definitely awesome to hear. You know what I mean? I didn't realize, you know, they recorded most of that uh, over there. Do you, you have like a studio going on there? Did you want to, did you want to show us a little bit around at all? Or? I can, it'll be kind of weird. I'll try to try to make it happen. Okay. Sure. Why not? All right. Cool. Cool. <laughs> so, all right. So this is my guitar rig that I'm practicing through for uh, music is art. And down here, nice. <laughs> this is a poor man studio down here. Believe it or not, there's not a lot of money in this. But you know, it started out where I've got free stuff. But hey, look, look at those dudes. Who are those um, guys over there? They're nobody famous. <laughs> no. I got. Uh, uh, years, a few years ago, I went in a Habsies on a synthesizer with my older son, which is not this one, and it came with Cubase recording software, and that's really what sparked me to make it a kind of a hobby here. But yeah, it's that. I'm, and sometimes I put up a microphone, I have people standing over against this wall, hammering out vocals. Yeah, I, I, uh, I, I don't really like Van Halen so much. You can tell. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah I, I remodeled this room i painted the walls like eddie's very very uh, cool man very nice. cool um yeah, i know cool. i know robert wants to come over and check it out firsthand totally so me. so i have to so i have to ask you this this is the van halen fan in me right because we all know eddie van halen studio 5150 so do you have a name for your studio or you're still thinking uh, about it yeah, no, that's funny. That John is this the guy who he's he's like this. He right. actually put Sunset Studios uh, on the record in Grand Island as my basement. Which, if you're a tax man and you're seeing this, I did it all for free. I never charge people for coming down here, so it's not a real thing. And it's it's because uh, that Sunset Boulevard sign over the entrance there. Nice. We called it Sunset Studio, so that works. I like it. Yeah, that sure. works. Yeah, yeah. It uh, kind of echoes Sunset Boulevard in Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what it is. Sunset Strip. It says there. Yeah. Excellent, man. That's that looks that looks great down there. Yeah, that looks yeah, really cool. Nice have... It's John. Bye. <laughs> we'll have to check in with you later, there, uh, John. Yeah. <laughs> But awesome. Yeah, that's so cool. Um, so do, do you have any other things coming up that you're going to be recording down there? Anything else going on or not Not right, right now? Well, yeah. I don't, I, I don't know how much, you know, John has let the cat out of the bag, but we're, we're already on version two. Oh, he uh, he let it out of the bag. Yeah. 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 He kind of he kind of he kind of uh, hinted toward that 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 would be coming. Yeah, so yeah. you let us know a little bit about it. If if you're able to give us a little bit more peak or not, we we understand. But uh, it's, it's um, you know a lot of the same uh, people on it, and a lot of uh, other surprises that I just can't give away. Oh, we totally understand. Yeah, but, uh, it's gonna be cool. I mean, and and this isn't. It's not just talk. We've already heard a lot of the the tracks that have been recorded and. Um, we got some epic players uh, playing on it again. Just so proud to be part of it. Do you know if uh, Phil and Jeremy from the Talisman are back on it? Uh, I believe so. I just want to show, show you. Yeah, we we went. We did some vinyl. It's no longer available, but like uh, you know, that's it that was one of the cool. Things yeah, I think about. I think I asked John to try to set aside some vinyl for for uh, for, Jer for Jerry. So hopefully uh, we got one for you, Jerry, hanging around. That'd be great. You have my address. Send me a nice little care package. But uh, yeah, you guys will definitely have to come back on, and maybe we'll have both you and uh, you and John on to talk about the the next uh, the next step here. What's what's coming? What's coming after that? You know. So that that sounds awesome. I can't wait to see you guys. You know, perform the tunes at the Music Is Art Festival coming up. That sounds like a, a a great event. You know, I've been trying to get to that thing here for the last couple of years in Buffalo, and uh, Planets just didn't align and just didn't happen. But this year, this year I'm going and, and I will be there. When is it? Just Saturday or all weekend? Uh, is it Saturday? I believe it's sat just. I believe it's just Saturday. I could be incorrect, but I believe it's just Saturday. So they have a couple stages going on there. 
and uh, all kinds of buff Buffalo things go of uh, Buffalo talent there. So it should be, it should be cool. I'll get some, we'll get some footage there from talking about rock and you folks be able to see some of that uh, what's happening. Right. Hopefully, hopefully more folks will, will come out to that. You know, it's a free, it's a free festival, I believe. Right. The weather looks like it'd be nice too. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's why I missed it. I think last time, I think it was like, it was pouring last well, time. Last, so I didn't get to check it out. Virtual. Yeah. Last year was all online. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, oh, yeah. Probably a year before that. I have such a bad reference when it comes oh, yeah. to time. Yeah. That's what happens when we get older. Just, uh, yeah. Yeah, we missed the whole year. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we missed the whole year. Let's, <laughs> yeah, let's just like go right over that and let's hope we don't start backtracking with the things that are happening. We're starting to see artists, you know, who are, are getting COVID, canceling tours, you know, and things like that. Gene Simmons, Paul Stanley you know different artists it's starting to happen so let's just hope uh, people start to realize and the light bulb starts to go off with people that you know hey if you want to get out in the world you want to do business you want to you know go here and there you're going to need to get the vax at some point it's, it's going to happen you know so let's let's hope uh, we get back to full steam ahead with all the concerts and things happening um, what's going on with diver down uh yeah it's a good question Rob and I were talking a little bit of that about that offline. Um, we're all hoping to play towards the anniversary of Eddie's death. So, you know, early October. Um, so the story behind that is, is our original drummer, Carl Sedella, moved to Las Vegas with his parents in 1995. Right. So. Uh, and we had been playing as Diver Down for about a year. We were very successful locally. We had a lot of grandiose, you know, ideas of maybe following Van Halen on tour, like some tribute bands do. It never really happened. But we wound up playing, when I say we, me and Rob Neubauer played with a few different bass players and drummers to try to keep it going. And, you know, it always sounded good. It just wasn't that core guys that started the band with, with Carl. And uh, so the, the four members have been myself, Rob Neubauer, Carl Sedella on drums, and uh, Joe, Joe Q on bass. And um, what we usually try to do is schedule a gig where Carl can visit from Las Vegas because his, his wife's family is up here as well. And then, he, you know, he's he's got a lot of musician friends. He'll play a bunch of clubs with a, a lot of his esteemed musicians around here when he comes. So he's almost playing out every night something. And he, and we always try to schedule a big Diver Down show um, while he's here. And what happened this uh, past summer was uh, Carl works at Man... Uh, I'm not going to say where he works, but because uh, not fair to him... Um, but he, he, because of COVID, he was out of work for so long and he finally got back to work and he couldn't promise us a date. Um, and we had something scheduled and we weren't sure he was coming, weren't sure he was coming. And it got to the point where we couldn't cancel it without, you, you don't want to be that band that cancels some show. Um, and so we played with another really fantastic local drummer and we pulled it off. He pulled it off. Um, but going forward, we're still want to stick with the, the core guys. So it's really getting the commitment and knowing that Carl can come up and visit and we could schedule a gig around, around that anniversary date. And, uh, yeah, so you know, I, this is a really long winded answer to your question. I'm so sorry, well, <laughs> but you know, somewhere in October, we're open for it. I just, I'll know the two weeks beforehand. That's what always happens. I'll have two weeks to like brush up on 40 Van Halen songs and I'll stress out for two weeks and get migraines. That's kind of how it works. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that sounds like the, what, you know, what you're talking about doing is, is, is a great idea. And um, we've, we've heard uh, different areas doing different type of, you know, events and and things commemorate you know commemorating you know the different uh folks that they're paying tribute to you know yeah. they had the uh, festival out there in nashville they had the dio birthday celebration where all the bands were playing some dio song you know that was a great idea to do a van halen thing i think that's that's an awesome idea you know to do something like that i'm sure ton, you'd have tons of people on board with that you know we, we threw that idea out there to steven the other day they should do like a sabbath thing going on that, that would be awesome you know but I think your idea is, is is great. I hope I hope we get to see you know 
diver down, you know, doing some shows and, and getting back into it, you know, that, that would be great. Um, well, the talisman did a Eddie Van Halen tribute out here for charity yeah. around that time. It was awesome. I, I, I talked with Phil a lot about that because uh, uh, Phil and I actually did another uh, podcast where we both uh, talked about Van Halen with the, uh, with the uh, guy who runs it. Uh, it's called the Guitar Hack Show. And uh, we were trading off licks and everything. And we had a blast. And so we kept in touch. And man, I saw some footage of that show. And it was awesome. Those guys pulled off some crazy tunes. Charlie Cavanaugh, Sammy Hagar. That guy's got the best voice going here in Nashville. And um, I'm going to work to get all those guys on sooner or later here. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Well, well, Gene, it's been great to speak with you. We really appreciate you you coming on the show with us and giving us, you know, taking us uh, th through the track with some some Van Halen and some of the things that are going on with the Buffalo Rock City album. Um, you know, we hope we hope we can see you know Diver Down playing out and doing some shows, you know, here in the area. That would that would be great. We really look forward to seeing that. As and well. some great Kiss stuff on on Saturday, right? This weekend. Yeah. 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 Double dose. <laughs> Yep. So yeah, so the music is art festival. If people want to check that out, that's coming. Uh, that'll be at the Buffalo River Works uh, Saturday. Uh, that'll be a great event to go and see. Um, and then Jerry, you want to tell us what's what's going to be coming up on the show next and what's happening in your neck of the woods? Um, well, like I said, we got um, originals from Mr. Gray. They're a three piece. They kind of uh, remind me of um, Grand Funk Railroad, except maybe they're a little bit darker. <laughs> and um we got um colleen alana coming on tomorrow from love's tragedy it's kind of her um um coming out party i guess she's been on hiatus for a while and um she's um releasing an ep and having the um release party on friday night um, along with mr gray and then um, they're going to follow that up with uh, Contagion, one of our um, fun party bands here in Nashville. They play a lot of great 80s hard rock and heavy metal covers. Um, and that's going to be at Bowie's on Friday night. And uh, Saturday night, we have the uh, Symptom of the Universe um, and the Thin Lizzy cover band playing at the end on um, Elliston Place. And... Um, uh, they're both female fronted bands from, from what I'm told. So I, I know at least the, uh, the Thin Lizzy band is fronted by Molly Marie Kent and, um, she's a whole lot of fun in the, uh, role of Phil, Phil, um, film line it. So, um, it's, um, going to be pretty interesting. This will be my second time seeing her and, um, they're just very entertaining and very, very good. So, yeah. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, so yeah, so we really look forward to talking to uh, Love's Tragedy and um, and Mr. Mr. Gray, I believe it is. So that that'll that'll be great coming up. Uh, yeah, definitely. Right. You know, yeah, get us some footage from that, Jerry. That'd be great to see. Um, all you folks in Nashville, you know, that are listening, go and check these folks out. Uh, it's definitely definitely worth it. Worth it. You won't be disappointed. Um, so again, uh, Gene, so great for you to be on the show with us today. We really appreciate it. And you folks out there, if you want to hear more. From us, please email us at uh, talkingaboutrock at gmail.com. Like us on our Facebook page. Check us out on Instagram. And as always, please subscribe to our YouTube channel so we can keep bringing you this, other artists from the different areas, keeping the rock torch alive. That's what we're trying to do for you. Thank you, Gene, for coming on. Yeah, thank hey, you so much, also, man. If I could plug my YouTube channel as well, if it's just Gene Schmidt on YouTube. I should be able. There are other guitar playing Gene Schmitz. They just don't look like me. Pretty yep, easy. Yeah, yeah. So check, you got the got the guitar hacks going on and the other videos going on. Yep. So check out Gene also as well. We'll we'll link some of your other videos and stuff to our playlist on our YouTube channel, Gene. So folks can check that out as well. So, but yeah, definitely check Gene out. An extraordinary guitar player. Um, definitely, you guys you guys are gonna love it. So um, we hope to talk to you again when whenever when the new album comes out uh, with uh, Kiss This. Buffalo Rock City 2 or whatever we're gonna we're gonna hear from you that'd be great man thank you so much for joining us tonight we appreciate Thanks it for having me. It, was a, it was a pleasure thank All you right. bless right, you have a great <laughs> night thank you Gene